Okay, we're at another location on our virtual field day. Uh, we really appreciate you sticking with us. You know, earlier in an earlier session that we shot, uh, we were talking about the late summer fertilization and utilizing cool seasons to to replace some supplementation cost and using that cool season on limit gra grazing situation. Uh, we got Brian back with me again. Brian, on those cool seasons, I mean, they they are very good protein supplementation. And you utilized limit grazing, mm -hmm. only so much time per day or per every other day. You had a schedule set up for these cattle. What are some other ways to utilize some cool season forages that would reduce expense of supplementation costs for a producer? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, you know, we were kind of limited uh, as far as acreage goes here at Perkins at the research station. And that's why we chose to limit graze, again, about a quarter acre per cow. We did that on a time basis. So we basically allowed cows to have access on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uh, for a two hour block uh, of time. And, and based on work that Dr. Dave Lawman has done in the past, we figured that was about the amount of supplementation that we wanted to get into them, forage. Uh, somewhere around 15 pounds every other day, so about seven and a half pounds a day of very high quality forage. Uh, our forage mix here in November tested about 24% crude protein and 71 TDN. So again, you're looking at essentially a 20 in a bag uh, right. when it comes to supplement. Yes. So again, we were short of the amount of forage, so we did limit graze. We used an automatic gate opener that would basically pop the gate open at eight o'clock. It had a bell on it. Cows were trained in just the matter of two or three grazing events, and then we'd show up two hours later to push them out. That's a great way to reduce labor. It essentially reduced our labor by 50% because we didn't have to be here to let them in. But if you don't want to do that, if that's too much management, probably the ideal strategy, to be honest, from a, from a cost standpoint, is to have your uh, entire amount of acreage needed for that cow in that January, February, March time frame as a cool season forage. So that could be small grains pasture, maybe we're at closer to an acre or an acre and a half per cow of small grain forage. Uh, there's other options as we go east, there's fescue. People run over there and they run cows on it the entire year. So that would be more of a continuous graze or a slow rotational graze type system. Uh, and again, we can stockpile fescue the same way we stockpile the Bermuda grass that we talked about this morning, meet that cow's requirements and go almost entirely through that winter grazing period. So what you're saying, just like in the stockpiling of Bermuda grass, we're utilizing a standing hay crop. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a lot of producers here in this area that a plant wheat and then roll it up for hay. All you're doing is utilizing it as a standing supplementation, sure. protein supplementation crop. Sure. So, and that's the problem with the small grains pasture, honestly, is it's too good a quality. Uh, you know, it's well over what a, a dry cow or even a lactating cow needs. So honestly, it fits the situation better to limit graze it, to restrict the intake of that cow and offer a little lower quality hay to that cow. Uh, so again, there are a lot of different options for producers that are interested in strategies they might have. Most of our county educators can help them set up these year round grazing systems, help them calculate the amount of forage they need. And it'd be you know, a welcome addition to have them come in the office, sit down with the county educator and go over some of this data. So by using your timed application, two hours every other day, so to speak, by doing that, you also got better utilization of the standing forage too. We did. Yeah, and the same way on the Bermuda grass, you know, we actually looked at that here at Perkins year before last we compared a continuous graze versus a strip graze. Uh, our continuous graze, as most literature shows, we were somewhere around 56% utilization of that forage that we grew. So in other words, 56% of what we grew, we got in a cow's belly. Right. Uh, when we looked at a strip grazing event where we were moving the cows about every three to five days, we were able to bump that up closer to 70%, about 68% utilization. So again, that's a huge change just in itself to the, the length of grazing time that X amount of forage lasts. And we simply did that with moving a single one hot wire fence around, limiting the access the cows had to that grown forage, to that stockpile forage. But actually by utilizing a limit graze for the cows, and I'm not talking about stalker calves that people just turn out on wheat pasture. Mm -hmm. By limit grazing that, you're getting better utilization and better value 
returned instead of just opening the gate and letting them have it. Definitely, yeah. So again, you know, in a continuous graze scenario, if we would have just allowed cows to have free choice access to this through the winter, you'd expect to maybe get 30 to 40% utilization of that forage. But our intensive limit grazing of this area, we were getting well over 80% utilization of the, of the cool season small grain forage out here. So that's really good topics. I, I appreciate you adding that, Brian. Thank you. All right, Brian, thank you very much. It's very interesting research that you're doing and demonstrations. It, it providing maximum savings for a lot of producers to help watch their bottom line. We, we really appreciate your input all across the state and what you're doing with this. Um, I'll, I'll let you make any final comments if you have any concerning your demonstrations or, or some other topics you, you might want to discuss. Well, I hope that answers the, the question on how we graze those cows. That was really a pretty innovative way to do that. And again, limit the grazing uh, and reduce the amount of labor we had by having that automatic gate timer. Anybody who's interested in that in the future could show up to some of the in-person field days and, and see that as well. One thing that I would add that we didn't really cover in the videos is that we've also been very diligent to try to catch weights on these cows. Anytime we go into a new forage species or we come off of a forage species, we're catching weights. And all that data will be in the handouts, but I think it's pretty interesting to see. Uh, we've done all this, we've made these changes and saved this significant amount of money but we've done it without hurting cow body condition. Matter of fact, we've increased cow body condition compared to kind of our traditional strategy and we haven't hurt rebreeding rates. So that's really the name of the game. You know, as far as my standpoint, working with producers, I wanna save you money and I don't wanna hurt your system at all as far as that rebreeding performance.